less armor protection than the enemy. We were fed up of being knocked around by those bigger tanks you can see in the museum, the German Tiger Tank, the King Tiger, and the Panther. And that symptom you can see on this tank here. When this tank came into service, it was by far the most sophisticated and powerful tank in the world. It's got this enormous gun on it. That's what they call a 120 millimeter high velocity gun. And the whole of that turret system and that gun was designed for lock knocking out a lot of enemy tanks. When it was firing at another tank, it didn't fire a bullet shape round that we're used to seeing like coming out of a rifle or a gun. It would fire a piston out the end of the barrel. When the piston left, left the barrel, it was one of the fastest things on earth. Sides of the piston would fall away and it would reveal about a 13 inch long metal dart, little fins on the back to keep it straight in flight, just like a dart you throw the dart ball. No explosive on it at all, made of tungsten, which is twice away to steel, so just by the sheer pure metal wear and the enormous kinetic energy, in other words, the welly behind that round, it would smash its way into an enemy tank quite often all the way through and out the other side. And a well-trained crew got that gun so accurate, 90 time, 98 times out of 100, they could hit a target out to three kilometers away with the very first round. So basically, if you're in range and this is pointing at you, it's you're a bomber. The gun. It is it's three guys in the turret. The commander, he's got his hatch open there, he's got that machine gun. He's looking out for targets all the time and telling the gunner who sits in front of him in the turret where to aim the gun. The gunner has a little, like a joystick for aiming the gun with a trigger on it. And when he's actually got the crosshairs on the target, he pulls that joystick, that trigger, and uh, the gun fires. The third crew member in the turret is a loader. And if you ever have to pick a tank crew for yourself, always pick your loader, someone who's short, stocky, built like a Russian shot putter, because the rate of fire in that tank will go down as a loader gets worn out. Good train crew. Well, training's in vital, you know, the best tank in the world, you've got a big crew, it's no good for anyone. A well-trained crew would be firing off that gun when they turn down at six to eight grand drop a minute, and they can go much faster than that if they had to. But of course, it's very wearing and tiring picking these big rounds up, which is why, again, fitness is quite important for a crew as well. Fourth crew member is a driver. He's right down the front of the vehicle, underneath the barrel of that gun, and uh, he's driving the vehicle in what they call a supine position. He's almost lying on his back driving it. And that's so that he's low down, the tank barrel can be low, and the whole turret is low down, and therefore you're less of a target to see and less of a target to hit. And the other great thing about the Chieftain is what they call a fully stabilised gun. They can lock the gun on target, and the tank can move, and the gun will remain locked on the target. Now the Chieftain has really thick armour on the front, this is still the generation that was mainly made of steel and when the Russians got bigger guns on their tanks, we added more armour to our tanks. So if you look at the front of the turret, it's almost got like extra cheek pieces either side of the barrel. That was armour that was added extra later on in its production run to give even more protection at the back. Um, but it was a great tank, no two ways about it. And in a funny way, it was probably one of our most successful tanks ever. It never had to fire its gun in anger. It did its job sitting out in Germany in the Cold War, and the Cold War never became a hot war because of those guys sitting in that tank, making sure it never actually happened. Um, so it was a very, very successful bit of kit, really. But we're just going to show you how mobile a 60-ton tank can be now by getting him to actually climb up on top of the mound in front of you. Uh, and for 60 tons, and I know it was me criticising the engine, actually the Chieftain wasn't a bad tank in terms of mobility.
for 72 hours on the trot, eating, sleeping, drinking, all your modern fun that can hold you and your brother.